I want to know about your relationship with Christian, the coach athlete relationship, and and when you started working together and how that came about. Uh, so we started working together in in 2015. Um, um, we then had our common coach, uh, Orion Matson, Dr. Orion Matson. He was uh, a coach from the Olympic Federation side uh, for the triathletes and also coaching Arel Twyten, the sports director too, which then was, of course, also the head coach for, for Christian. Um, and um, uh, yeah, I got to, um, I think I started uh, train a little bit together with the guys in, uh, I don't remember whether it was 2013 or 2014, mainly on the swim sessions. And with one of the athletes a little bit, we were also running a little bit and biking a little bit together. That was actually, uh, he also turned coach on the team in 2017, I think. Uh, but in 2015, I how say uh, then Dr. Oya Matson said I should get involved with uh, Arvel and Christian preparing for Rio. So my uh, how to say my responsibility at that time was more to shadow Christian and uh, no Christian and and and, uh, and Arvel in their work, do some how to say yeah, testing and how to say observe to see what we potentially could do to improve the performance leading into Tokyo. Uh, um, yeah, so I was more, more shadow, uh, how to say, how to say leading into, into Rio. And then uh, after Rio, uh, of course, in the process leading towards uh, Rio, um, I saw several things that we, we could and we should do something with, uh, some, I'll say, more significant things and other, let's say, more marginal stuff, which we could, I'll say, spare for later. Um, so in 2017, I came on board uh, and, how say, got involved in the coaching uh, and also the sports science side of it as well. Um, my, how say, my, um, I focus primarily on the Olympic program, that was how say my how say my responsibility, altitude camp, the Olympic program, the preparations that had to go into that in order to be ready for Tokyo. Um, and gradually, I started. Of course, uh, I how say since the, those times when the team was gathered was very often when we were in camps, whether it was heat camps, whether it was altitude camps, and so on. And we sp spent uh, several, uh, I would say. Yeah, several months in total during a year uh, on heat and, and heat and altitude camps. And that was also when the team was gathered. That was also my responsibility. Th those camps was also my responsibility then when it, come to, when it came to the coaching and other things as well. So we sat together as a coach team and then, of course, looked a little bit, okay, what should the program look like? Uh, how do we, what do we think we can improve and so on? But uh, I would say the execution and field and so on was... Uh, where I followed up then also the athletes in, in also on the side with, with the testing and so on. And uh, yeah, so that's actually where, where it started. And when did you sort of take over as Christian's coach per se, like as his main go-to? Uh, I would... Uh, 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 I would say that has that that has probably been been, been a gliding transition more or less. So, uh, but uh, I think uh, uh, it's uh, how to say, um, uh, yeah. I would say it's a glide, gliding transition more or less. We have, yeah. we have always been, we have always been a, been, been a team. How they working together and uh, working together and so on. And uh, but uh, of course, uh, we. We do the coaching and how to say individualization a little bit different than how say most other teams have done at least in the past. I don't know what they do today, um, but uh, yeah, uh, that that has been my responsibility for I'll say soon a decade. Yeah. Okay. So I'm imagining my next question was going to sort of see if either you you as a coach or Christian as a as an athlete had to change much or adapt to work together. But as it's been such a gradual process, I imagine you've you've amalgamated to to have a relationship that's just works for both of you yeah i think yeah. one of the, i think that i'd say the one of the philosophies that changed when i came in was that we needed to individualize the training for the athletes um, 
yeah, that how I say that 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 was how I say one of the how the main things. And of course, I think that one of the that's also one of the things that the artists really enjoyed because they saw that it was not like individualization for the sake of individualization, but it was also rooted in science, where we do how say different kinds of testing and to understand their how say their power and capacity and uh, a little bit okay strength and weaknesses and so on and then when i think that one of the things that they saw also was that this produced very quickly results as well because how they uh, we went of course from a triathlon nation in 2016 that was how say fairly unknown i would say to suddenly uh, being present on most of the podiums moving forward and then especially you've got the bermuda how say triple and uh, uh, things uh, just grew and got stronger and stronger and of course the athletes also really notices this and of course and if you look at the athletes also you see that Christian Gustav and Kasper are highly different athletes and you look just at their physiques and I think that when they felt also that all of them are advancing so uh, quickly too that was how say it becomes how say like a positive reinforcement you just you, you just want more of it yeah, no, I, I definitely see that. And you mentioned there the individualization. <laughs> I can just about say it in English. But you, before that, you mentioned there were a couple of major things that were going to sort of change or that you saw that were, were room for improvement. Was that one of them? And if so, what was the other? Yeah, so the individualization was one. And the other thing was that I'll say, of course, we have used... Uh, we have used a lot of I say, lactate. We started to use a lot of lactate testing and so on as well uh, as, as one one of the metrics we used to understand a little bit what what changed in in the physiology and also to control the intensity and and and, and exactly that maybe that particular thing intensity control was also something that just became like a revolution a little bit for for them a little bit where they suddenly started to feel that the, the workouts started to match with how our programs were or how the programs were were, were uh, described and, and and so on and it matched suddenly for more of the of all of the athletes too so inten individualization and intensity control too uh and this yeah, distribution all, all, all these things are how they interlinked so when you first start yeah. to do individualization is not enough only to start to how say think that things are about maximum elected steady state or things but it's more about understanding where do we need to prioritize and then of course making sure that you're nailing the intensity or to put it more correct getting the right training load for how say according to your needs uh, yeah, yeah that makes sense and um what how would you describe your coaching philosophy not the teams but like yours as a coach sort of if you took yourself out of it you've talked about the aspects you're, you're working on now but would you be able to describe your philosophy I, I don't think I have like a um, uh, very uh, how say uh, like a philosophy written down on a. You don't. You don't have a tagline. <laughs> no, 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 no. Um, the athletes are actually making a little bit fun of me uh, because as what they, they they say okay what is the quote of the day uh, because they, they uh, what I basically say back to them, guys if I find one quote you can always find a quote that says the complete opposite so it, it doesn't make sense but I would say that I am I. I think that it's, I, I probably approach things from a more physics perspective rather than a physiological perspective. What I mean by that, and uh, I feel like I repeat myself a little bit, but not, not in the, on this one, but I'll say, I, I said this probably a, a few other places before as well, but that is that everything in, how say, everything that is in the world is more or less uh, a function of the first law of thermodynamics. So basically you can't destroy energy, you can't create energy, you can only convert energy from one form to another form. And I think that when you are, when you want to improve something, um, you need to understand the input and you need to understand the output. And if you start to go by like very specific, so for example, if you only started to try to understand things from a lactate perspective, that would be a too narrow perspective that not, not necessarily um, uh, uh, manifests itself in speed. It's just an indicator, like this is just an indicator. But you can imagine, I think the only quote or how's it, and I wouldn't call it a quote, but more like a, uh statement yeah yeah or yeah or let's say uh, yeah some saying or whatever i have must must be more like that the uh calories are the ultimate ceiling to performance while 
speed is the ultimate measurement of performance. And that guides a little bit how I work with the training because what we want to understand is, of course, that how do you actually, I'm sorry, how, how, when, when you are, when you are, how to say, trying to increase something, what is changing? Are you changing the inputs and the inputs goes up and then also the output goes up? Or is it so that you know there are not so much we can do with the inputs, we rather have to do something with efficiency in between? Huh? And then the thing is that the efficiency part is basically everything that goes in between. And that, that's where the physiological aspect come in. But the problem very often with physiology, if you just look at it from a pure physiology perspective and output is that there are so many variables in between that, that we can't measure. We can measure a lot but the, and we measure a lot but there are so many things that you can't measure either that if you get too obsessed with with a lot of those metrics there and that that is what is only guiding you then it's easy to miss out especially on exactly speed because you're obsessing over rather some physiological metrics rather than speed which is the ultimate determinant of performance in the end anyway so uh but that doesn't mean that uh, again uh, physiology is super important for me but that's more like a vehicle of a vehicle to understand uh okay so when we are doing this with input here why does the output here and then physiology becomes more the vehicle to try to understand what are you manipulating why does this change or why why does the athlete respond to it and or not respond to it and, and these kind of things and you try to find methods to test this uh, or to quantify this to understand to, to better have control over those let's say variables that you are trying to manipulate and so on but again never on the compromise of speed it, you're you're describing perfectly how sort of a coaching is an art and a science and you can't just let a computer do it it's like you know all, everything you're taking into account and i think again this next question you've partly answered but but as a coach, how hands-on are you? I know right now you're in Sierra Nevada and you're working with the team day in, day out. But as a year, if you look at the year as a whole, how sort of hands-on are you as a coach? And well, it depends what you mean by hands-on. Uh, I have, I would say, meetings with the athletes like I had uh, every, so for example, leading into the Olympics or all the years before leading into Olympics, I, I have normally, how say, evening meetings with the athletes reviewing a little bit what they did yesterday, what they did today, what they, how they think they will affect the training tomorrow, how they, how say, how, how, how did the training go compared to, compared to what was planned. Of course, obviously, if you just look at what you plan from a, from a power perspective, or speed perspectives it's quite simple you can just go into your training diary and just look at okay this is the speed we planned this is the speed you went by but there are also a lot, a lot of other variables that also how say makes a difference so uh, i normally ask them uh, also to reflect over the how say how did they execute for example on power for example the power duration how did they execute on speed duration how did they uh, what was the perceived extortion of feeling compared to what was planned, for example? Uh, what, what what did the inter internal metrics like either heart rate, uh, heart rate, uh, lactate, uh, SMO2 values, uh, or even if you use, for example, when we use the view to master, what did the oxygen consumption say, for example, compared to what we were aiming for? So then when they reflect over these kind of things, uh, uh, I'd say both inside what I did and how that affected the session today and a little bit, how does the session today affect how they really I think the session today affects also the session tomorrow and then tomorrow when they have the session they actually do retrospective looking back yeah well yesterday you thought that this session you did yesterday would affect this session today positively but actually today you said that it didn't so then you understand that okay maybe I went a little bit harder than I should yesterday and this have to go into account and this is how we basically adjust always the plan so if you have a plan but then you of course need to make adjustments to the plan and so on because there are some important some workers that are more important to nail some other workers where you are you are starting maybe to make adjustments first on and so and i think that all this uh, well so then the question is okay how hands on am i while i am in the field with them i am i am in the laboratory with them i'm i'll say having the reviews with them uh and always also trying to advance this together with our tech tech partners as well so uh, uh, um, I would say that's, that's I, 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 don't, I, I, yeah. I don't know how hands-on others are, so it's yes, a little bit yes. difficult to... A little no, bit I, know, I know, but I think from what you're explaining from, from my perspective, and obviously we've been speaking to Jan's coach, Dan, that is a very different um, kind of concept and that you are physically with the with Christian most days and you're there on poolside and you're doing the testing and you're speaking. It's not a sort of virtual relationship where you speak on the phone and you send the programs and things. It's you you are there and it sounds like you're incredibly hands on in, in what I perceive as hands on. But yeah, the well well answered anyway. Um 
you've talked, you obviously talked a lot about numbers and this is kind of your, your bread and butter, but what, what numbers do you listen to the most? Like if you sort of had to choose your, I don't know, top five to 10, are there, what are the ones you really look at every day when you're, when you're coaching the guys? Their feelings. The, maybe awkward to say because I, I think everybody in the world have this impression that we are we are so we are measuring whatever can be measured and of course we do measure a lot but that is only to inform to inform or guide in the decision but ultimately in the end of the day the only thing that matters is basically the, the athlete's subjective uh, feeling of it and of course the subjective feeling of an athlete is also affected by how's it a metrics so if an athlete sees that oh i'm riding with a higher power than i'm doing for that also has a positive impact on the training or if it's lower i can have a negative impact on it but if you have other metrics that you can also rely on then you can maybe give an explanation or a natural explanation for it so the athletes doesn't how say linger so much around how say that it was not where that should be and so on and you learn to understand that it's a it, 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 it is a rhythm but in the end of the day uh the most important thing is basically uh, and what I adjust the training on is not so much the, the metrics. They are more informative, informative metrics. And, you, and of course, I'm so used to look at the data. So you, you see, you see the bigger picture and so, but the most important feedback is always the feedback we get from, I would say, that I have from, from the athletes uh, move, moving forward. And that's also actually a lot of the pro, when I do the programming, when I do the programming and we set goals and so on, that's also something I never do on my own. It's something that I always do together with the athletes, looking, okay, what should, what are the targets? What do we believe is possible? Uh, how can we stretch things, lift things, how, how, yeah, and so on. And we sit down and we have more like the general, the general discussion around it. And then my work with how to say the detail planning starts. And I don't do that even alone either. I can do much of that alone, but I have, I, I work on this together with, uh, again, with Dr. Oyan Matson, for example. I, I have other uh, people around me as well, where I sit together and discuss this kind of thing. Arald, uh, Mikal, uh, there are many people that uh, I'll say they are around, I'll say working, working, uh, I'll say, yeah, on this. So it's, it's absolutely not a solo show. No, I, I realize that and you're very self deprecating. When you're talking there about numbers and the athletes' feelings, that leads me on to, to wanting to know what the, I guess, the learning outcomes were from Dubai for, for Christian and for you. Um, I, first of all, that was uh, a race I didn't want him to go into, to be honest, first. So that we had a little bit of discussion whether he should race it or not, to not race it. Um, but then we agreed on that, okay, fine, he would do the race, uh, but it would be uh, basically a training race. They were, they, we would do no taper, no nothing, how's it leading into, no, no specific work I was preparing him for. And so, so he would basically do that on, how say, the, the build that we were in, more or less. Um, when he came there, uh, how to say, we knew already that he had, it. so of course we didn't do anything with the form, uh, and how to say, so he, but what I can say is that he, the capacity of Gustav and Christian has been now better than it has been before the Olympics in some of the disciplines, especially for example, in the biking part and so on, it has been strong, running part has been strong for them, swimming, there, were, there are also things changing, but again, we have to differentiate also between capacity and form. Uh, too. So of course, since you're not tapering for it, and so there are no form there, uh, how say you are, you're building fitness. Um, that said, uh, he was strong. Uh, we felt confident that uh, it was a race where he would really be able to contend or how say compete for the, uh, for the podium. Uh, but then he stumbles on the starting line. <laughs> First, so he gets last out into the water, and then secondly, when he gets onto the bike, uh, even though he pushes power numbers that are astronomic for one hour, 20 minutes, he somehow is capable of losing time, and then he has a puncture, he loses another eight minutes, and of course, that deflates, of course, the motivation quite a lot and of course when you put out that kind of effort also to bridge try to bridge up with the with with the front as well it costs quite a lot also to get back on the bike and, and so on so hindsight of course yes we it's difficult a little bit to say if it was a race where you how say you set this as a priority b or a race then of course it would be more like okay what did we do wrong what what can we learn from this but it's a little bit harder to evaluate when 
of course, hindsight, we could just have said, okay, let's taper for this race. We should, or we should have tapered for this race or these kind of things, but that's be, being hindsight. And again, nothing, I probably, we would have come, on, come to terms on, I'll say anyway, before going back, uh, reevaluating whether we should, should, should do it or not. So, yeah, I'll say you win some, you lose some, that's a part of the game. Uh, and yeah. uh, I think uh, also this is what we see. I think last year, Gustav, uh, Christian, how say had, how say they, made fantastic debut into the Ironmans. Of course, when you do this, of course, sometimes you are stuck in, into a mindset, that, okay, maybe this is all, we, when you look at this, this is, oh, everybody learns, runs two, between 240 to 245 in Ironman, okay? So that's the speed we have to aim for. Of course, that's not what we did. We, we looked at more, okay, what, what we are approaching scientifically, what can we do? And this is, of course, a little bit also, I think that we will see now when we come to St. George, people are now understanding they have to run faster so they put them smart athletes and coaches they would put this into their program and of course start to race more train more specifically for this and try to adapt to this and that's so we, we will see already in st george it, it, that would absolutely not be um that will not be a walk in the park i'm pretty confident it will be a it will be a tough competition but of course that's also what makes it much more exciting too that's a little bit what i actually been missing a little bit now after the world championship in edmonton is that fighting part of it uh, mm -hmm. and now now it seems that it it's it's picking up and that's that's fun it makes it uh, how say even i can feel a little bit more nerves because you don't know what you're expecting when you're getting into saint george yeah i can see just the yeah the excitement in your body language there so how much more, I mean, I don't know how you quantify it, but how much more does Christian have to give? What, what can we see coming from Christian in the next few years? Uh, uh, well, I, unfortunately, years, uh, I think, is uh, not worth speaking of because basically we are turning back to Olympic training again after, so uh, over next year. So it, it will be the races this year, and that's it, more or less, both for Gustav and Christian. But um, I think that uh, for Christian, what we will see is that uh, I think that in a, how's I, if you just look at the bike and the run, for example, for Cosmo, knowing that the swim was a fast swim also because of the conditions that day. Uh, spike being a little bit longer, uh, but anyway, how to say, we can expect to the biking to go maybe a little bit faster we don't know whether we will balance it that way or the other way because again it's a budget it's a budget of where do you put your effort in order to produce the the, the how say the fastest total time that's uh, um we we could always aim for the uber biker uh, approach and then just blow up on the on the on, on the run but again this is a triathlon and it's about balancing uh, uh all three dis disciplines and uh yeah in Cozumel, he was uh on the run, he was also, how say, uh, he had a diarrhea. Uh, he and, and of course, that's not ideal for such an event when you really know that nutrition is a huge part of it. Uh, so I think that for sure, based on that, we, we can we can go faster. Uh, how much faster we can can do this year? Because we also have to balance it between a little bit other things also taking or how to say attention. It means that I think uh, Saint George difficult to say because it's a, it, it it is a course that is more technical and so on as well so um but for example kona um uh, yeah. well if we if you just use cosmel as a reference then for example that he can shave off a couple of more minutes on the bike uh, without i'd say uh, affecting too much on 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 the on the run for sure and if how say not having a diarrhea but also not having the experience more experience with how fast you how how much can you actually take out of your body uh, i think we can also drop off how to say uh we can shave off probably at least five more minutes on the run i guess okay let's say five more minutes or approximately five more minutes on the run yeah okay well that's that's it i, I like the, the give me numbers that's bold and we're excited to watch it uh, how do you know well last couple of questions but how do you know when christian is ready to race well I think that because, um, again, this is of course, a, well, it depends because the thing is that when Olympic racing and so on, of course, there you have, we have had so many races, so many ETCS races and so on. So, you know, we know a little bit based on all the measurements we do that what, what, what does Christian look like, for example, what does Gustav look like when, when, when they are producing good, how's a good competition? When are they, they've, how's a, yeah. Um, 
on the Ironman, we don't, we have very little, how to say, uh, samples to compare with. We have, uh, so Gustav, uh, or uh, yeah, Gustav uh, in, in, in Florida, Christian in, um, in, uh, in uh, Cozumel. Um, so we really don't have that, let's say, that 100% feeling for, uh, you can always, as I say, do so much with science. But again, like I said, the physiological aspect that, that are in between here, where you're trying to, do something either with efficiency or with how they both input and output is still a little bit how to say an area where we are optimizing and learning more uh, every how say every day uh, and um, what of course we have and and we also make so much measurement that we also make we, we also make we also made some how to say some discoveries last year that was quite mind-boggling for us as well uh so uh to be published in a couple of years but uh okay. <laughs> but but but, the t but i would say i think both athletes when you see that when you're doing longer specific workouts you see that you are how say hitting your target numbers you have the feel the feelings in there the confidence is in, in there it is a process where we are we are since i am quite hands-on so whether i'm home and i'm following them up on phone and other things when i'm with my family or i'm in the field especially when you are close together then you, you get a pretty much quickly a feel for okay what where are we there or are we not and and so i would say that uh it uh, you can do so much with numbers but in the end it's it boils down to the subject okay so right so we basically won't know if christian's ready until we actually see him race at st george us as the public watching <laughs> uh, oh in that sense i can say um i wouldn't i i i would the time where typically we start to look at because we are not into the block where we are doing very much specificity yet. We are starting, we are rather working now on characteristics that we want to tune or have ready as a fundament for when we start to work on a specific part. So when we start to work on a specific part, uh, I'll say a month out, three, four weeks out, then is uh, when I start to get a feel for, okay, where, where are we? And, and, and you see from session to session, what are, how much it's going in the, in, in the direction that you want. So that's the time I would know whether, okay, we need to make, make bigger adjustments or, okay, we are on track. We are on track for what we want to, what, what we want to achieve. Yeah. Okay. And I know um, I read a quote, I, th I think, um, correct me if I'm wrong, but you were saying how Christian came to you and said, right, you know, I, I want to win an Ironman in three months. Jan went to Dan and said in three years, uh, how, how are you fast tracking his progress so quickly? Uh, I think uh, I think that uh, one. Uh, so Don is a very close friend of mine. I know Don very well. Uh, also, his family knows my family, and we are we have been for vacations together. So we we speak uh, quite openly about stuff, and and of course that gave me also an advantage in the sense that I I could ask Don a little bit. Okay, what were the big what were the bigger adjustments that you had to do when for for Jan and so on, and 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 uh, that was one of the things that. Uh, Dan was very open with me on and he said, well, I think that one of the biggest advantages you have going into an Ironman now is that you already have the volume in place. While for Jan, he had to build also the volume, build also the volume for him uh, leading into the races there. So we, I'll say that, that I think was probably the biggest uh, advantage. But then of course, other advantage we have also is because we do and have so good control over all the measurements we do and so on. It's very easy to tune how to say to tune the body and we know how quickly it responds to uh, and, and what it takes basically for the specificity too. So that also gave us a, but I, I, I can be, I can be honest and say that when Christian said to me, how's a half year before the Olympics that I'm going to win, I'm going to win gold and uh, I'm going to take the gold on, uh, on Kona in October as well. And I, I basically said, this is not a half Ironman, this is an Ironman. Uh, and, and we thought actually that it would be, bigger differences between them but we uh, i would say there are there are for sure there are differences and we see there are also bigger physiological changes uh going from olympic to half to then then it is going from olympic to obviously to a, to a full but but but, in, but but at the same time uh i think that uh, um, there there was i would say when we when we first did the measurement, when we did the measurement and we tracked a little bit the progress and so on and see, saw what happened, it was also a little bit of confirmation, okay, we are on the right track and, and that's also, we're not like, 
looking at the blind and just making some guesswork, but you are tracking a little bit also very accurately what is really happening and trying try to understand it. And that, that also gave us an advantage. But Jose, biggest advantage was that we didn't need to bring him up to from a medium volume to a big volume in a couple of three months. We already had much of the volume in place. There was a small adjustment that needed to be done at that part. And then it was more about, I'll say, changing the program and, and starting to, to tailor it or... Um, uh, yeah, specified for 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 yeah. the demands that we thought they would meet. Yeah, yeah, that makes sense. Right, my final question. Obviously, I am looking at a comparison between Jan and Christian for this video. I know there's a lot of other contenders that are going to be at St George, including Gustav and several other incredible athletes um, and some other Olympic gold medalists as well. But how do you envisage the race panning out when we compare those two athletes, Jan versus Christian? So I think I think one. Uh, of course, uh, uh, to be fair, Jan have had an incredible career. He is 40 years old. And uh, uh, so he doesn't have age on his side of it. But, uh, I'd say just from, let's say, from a pure uh, physiological perspective. But what he has on his side is that he's been racing so much uh, Ironmans over all these years. Maybe, of course, a little bit less the last years, just because of the situation and so on. But... Uh, one should never undermine how they that experience of knowing 100% or let's say very close to 100% how much you can extract for yourself in the different situations that allows you maybe to play a little bit more on with tactics than for example less experienced people can do um, I think there are a few people that probably know themselves better in an Ironman than probably Jan does so of course that's a, that's a, that, that, that is an advantage advantage for Jan uh, but on the other side, I think that um, yeah, primary strength that that Christian uh, uh, Christian have is that he have been able to do more racing lately, um, probably more. Oh, no, actually, that's just speculation, but more specific training, just seeing that uh, Jan is in Andorra skiing. <laughs> um, but uh, to, be, to be honest, uh, of course, I, I would, I, I, I will be surprised. No, that's, that's, well, yeah, well, I will be surprised if, if, Jan, if Jan beats uh, Christian, but one should never undermine how to say the experience uh, that Jan have, because I think that the experience and probably also probably a little bit more efficiency as well uh, just because he's been working even more on that for a longer time uh, that, that, that are the things that are maybe in favor favor of Jan compared to uh, compared to uh, Christian but uh, yeah I, well answered <laughs> I, I that was a difficult question <laughs> you answered it very well I, I appreciate it um well thank you so much for your time and best of luck to you and christian for, for st george and for kona <laughs> thank you so much thanks